I'm just 30 minutes outside of Tokyo. I'm visiting the R&D department of a major foods maker. They're known for their frozen meals, but today I'll be visiting a special section that develops substances used to grow IPS cells. Let's go find out. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, I'm Senda. Sho Senda is the senior researcher developing cell culture mediums. I imagine a cell culture medium is like nutrition for cells, like food for us. The medium must taste really good to the IPS cells. That's right, and this is the only culture medium approved for clinical applications of IPS cells in Japan. It has world-class performance. The main feature of this culture medium is its strength in promoting cell reproduction. When IPS cells are placed in this solution and grown for a week, it produces more than 10 times the cells of a conventional culturing solution. Here is a video of culturing in progress. You can see the cells reproducing. Another advantage is that it is inexpensive. Until now, the culture medium needed to be changed every day. But with the new solution, every second day is enough. Less changing the medium also means less time and effort for the researchers. Together, this eliminates 90% of the total cost. In the new culture medium, a total of about 50 different amino acids, minerals and other ingredients are mixed together. This culture solution is a delicious meal for the IPS cells. What's inside and how is it made? I'm afraid that's a company secret. But I can tell you that I have been preparing tempting meals for the cells by thinking about creating a comfortable environment for reproduction in terms of their metabolism. In fact, what triggered the development of this culture solution was a request from Dr. Shinya Yamanaka of Kyoto University, the father of the IPS cell. The collaboration with Kyoto University began in 2011. But Senda was asked to submit an initial sample in just six months. To tell the truth, I thought it was impossible. There are dozens of components in a culture solution. You need time to examine them one by one. Senda came up with a clever plan. He tested the candidate ingredients in groups. If he cultivated IPS cells in a culture medium with 20 different ingredients, he would also grow IPS cells in another culture medium that excluded five of those ingredients. If the cells die or result in other indesirable effects, it means one of the five missing ingredients is a necessity for IPS cells. I was able to find a very good culture medium in a short period of time. When I found it, I was quite happy. And at the same time, I was relieved. But when the culture solution was sent in to the certifying agency for clinical use products, they identified a safety issue. For safety reasons, the rules say that products used in clinical applications must minimize ingredients derived from animals and human beings. A major problem stood in the way. But researcher Hiroki Ozawa had a solution for the solution. He replaced all 50 ingredients with artificially made proteins. Moreover, he verified the traceability of the raw materials for all the ingredients. 
At the time, it was very difficult to trace and certify their initial ingredient. So instead, we decided to gather a number of substances which had clear traceability and then try to find the best ones. After two years of this work, In 2014, the culture medium was put on the market as fit for clinical applications using iPS cells. I respect all the scientists who make this current world. I like to follow them as a scientist. And I know um, it was the challenge to try and uh, make new value uh, which makes people's life better. And uh, simply, uh, science is fun. I love science. Science is beautiful. So the skills of a Japanese craftsman are even being put to use in a field like this. Yes, but there were a lot of things that he couldn't tell me because it's a company secret. But it's a precise combination of ingredients, just like a recipe for cooking. Thanks to their efforts, our basic research will make steady progress. I'm glad we can collaborate in this way. Thank you very much, Michelle, for showing us IPS cells from a different perspective. Today, we've seen how miniature livers made from IPS cells are being used in regenerative medicine, in developing models of fatty livers, and in developing new drugs. So, Dr. Takebe, what does it feel like for you being in the middle of all this? Well, I started this research because I really wanted to help save more patients. So of course, it's important to treat individual patients, but we can also treat entire groups of patients by creating disease models that lead to new drugs. So I think I'm on the right path now, doing different types of research that complement one another. I want to get useful results as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Dr. Takebe, for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. My pleasure. Today, we saw one of the front lines of IPS cell research, recent work on miniature livers. Dr. Tashiro, what did you think? Well, it's remarkable what's being done with IPS cells now. Of course, we can't cure the diseases right away. That takes time. But I think that steady basic research and wonderful ideas like Dr. Takebe's will lead to the development of more clinical applications using IPS cells. I hope viewers had a chance to see that Japanese IP cell research is advancing on many levels, including basic research. Thank you, Dr. Tashiro. And that's the end of our second of two special episodes on IPS cells. ScienceView will continue to follow future developments of this story. Thank you for joining us.